Hello, I'm Andrew Wirth. I'm the convener of the New Zealand Veterinary Association Hip and Elbow Dysplasia Schemes. And this video will talk to you about the changes we've made to incorporate the pen hip system. So the New Zealand Veterinary Association for many years has used a standard scheme for scoring dogs for hip dysplasia. And this scheme is based on the same scoring system used in the UK and Australia. It's widely known as the Willis Scheme. This scheme has been in operation for over 20 years and yet we've seen minimal change in the hip status of dogs in this country. And for that reason, the New Zealand Vet Association has decided to recommend the use of the pen hip scheme. So what is the pen hip scheme? Well, the pen hip scheme is the Pennsylvania University Hip Improvement Scheme. And it's a new way of looking at radiographs of dogs to try to demonstrate their propensity or the likelihood of developing hip dysplasia. So why has the NZVA changed from a traditional scoring system to recommending the pen hip system? Well like many countries around the world, the amount of improvement that we've seen in reducing the incidence of hip dysplasia has not been as good as we would have liked. When we specifically look at the New Zealand Veterinary Association data, and we've studied the effect in the Labrador, the Rottweiler, the Golden Retriever and the German Shepherd. In three of those breeds there's really been no discernible improvement. In the German Shepherd, the improvement we've seen amounts to only two hip score units out of 106 in a period of 20 years. When we look specifically at the New Zealand Veterinary Association data, there has not been any major improvement in the Labrador, Golden Retriever or Rottweiler breeds. And even in the German Shepherd, the amount of improvement is only two hip score units in the last 20 years. So what evidence is there that changing to the pen hip scheme is going to increase the improvement we're likely to see over the next several generations? Well, organisations such as the Seeing Eye in the US have moved from a traditional scoring system to pen hip and they've noticed an improvement in their offspring. In the past they used the American equivalent of our NZVA scheme, but greater gains have been achieved since moving to pen hip. And this is likely due to the higher heritability of the pen hip distraction index. Heritability is a measure of how much of a trait is determined by the genetics of a dog versus the environmental effects. So a poorly heritable trait is mainly produced by changes in environment, the way the dog was brought up. But a highly heritable t uh, trait is primarily determined by the dog's genetics. It turns out that the, the key indicators of hip dysplasia on a traditional scoring scheme have fairly low heritability, whereas we get moderate to high heritability when we use a distraction index as measured by pen hip. So what is the distraction index? The distraction index is a measurement of how loose a dog's hips are. The pen hip system targets this looseness or laxity as a sign that the dog will go on to develop hip dysplasia or is at risk of hip dysplasia. It's important to know that not every dog with loose hips automatically gets hip dysplasia, but the more loose they are, the greater the risk. We can demonstrate looseness on this plastic model. If we look at the hip in its normal position at a standing angle, then there's always a certain degree of movement available, otherwise the hip would simply wear out. This is its loosest position. But if we look at the position in which we take a traditional x-ray, we're extending the dog's hips and putting them in their tightest possible position because all the soft tissues, the joint capsule and the ligaments are twisted around and that pushes the hips tighter and tighter. So the traditional system has a limitation in that the dog's hips will look at their tightest. The pen hip system puts the hips in a neutral position and then distracts them, applies a force that will bring the hip out into its most loose position. So we will uncover dogs that might have slipped through the old system and appeared to be normal. And that's essentially the problem with the traditional schemes, 
is that they tend to produce false negatives, dogs that appear to have good hips but actually have some laxity. Now remember, some motion is normal. It's the amount or degree of motion which is important. And the pen hip system can put a number to this looseness and give us a distraction index. The pen hip system is very powerful in that that index can then be compared to other dogs of the same breed. And you can have a rank of your dog within the breed. So the pen hip system has some marked advantages because it has a high heritability and we can eliminate or reduce the number of false negatives. If we think about the old system, it served us well, it served its purpose, but it's a bit like an old cell phone from 20 years ago. It's no longer the tool we need to move forward. We now have a smartphone, we now have pen hip. It has some noted advantages. There is some change in the process by which we have to take the x-rays and there is an additional cost simply because three x-rays need to be taken and training is required on behalf of the veterinarian. Now each veterinarian's individual pricing is determined by their own practice structures and it's not set by the NZVA, so prices will vary from vet to vet. But like any new technology, we have to look at the advantages which offset the costs. So the benefits certainly outweigh any increase in price.